we're pretty quiet about a lot of this stuff, but like, it's nice to be able to show people like how deep we're into it. And we've been on for secret for four years now. Yeah, and it's fun to actually be able to talk about it. The future: Ibis's secret carbon innovations. March 2018, the new Ibis Ripmo was coming out in a few more days and Ibis had flown me down to their headquarters just outside of Santa Cruz, California in order to go for some rides to their top dealers, talk about the new bike and simultaneous to the launch of the Ripmo, we were also going to tell the dealers about this top secret plan for Ibis to develop in-house carbon manufacturing capabilities. Sure enough, here they are, they're making frames. Did you ride? I did ride. I'm already cleaned up. Wow, that was fast. <laughs> Briar Cliff in the house. But howdy. How's it going, Lou? It's going great. What was the best part of today's ride? Uh, probably riding with you and my son. Are you guys presenting at NABS next year? I was actually <laughs> wanting to release the press release on this thing during NABS this year. That would have been pretty awesome. So for a long time, we've been thinking about what we can do to, to make things better just in general with uh, manufacturer carbon frames and we do 100% QC, so every single frame gets checked in a, a number of ways that will expose flaws that might result in a frame failure later. QC, so QC was my first gig at IBIS. That means I would open up boxes of frames fresh off the boat from Asia and go through them and manually stress test every single main pivot and bottom bracket before they went out the doors. To this day, 10 years later, IBIS is still 100% QCing their frames themselves. A big part of that is thanks to this guy, Hans Heim, the CEO of IBIS and a guy I sat next to for seven years while I was working there. I've managed to learn tons from Hans by working with him, but he also shaped a big part of my own career because he was running the companies that made the bikes that I started out riding. <laughs> Bad talk. <laughs> the tallest thing in three counties. When Ibis is telling their dealers about their plans to build frames here in the USA, there's one really important theme to consider. It's that in Asia, labor is far cheaper than here in the United States, and carbon frames are a very, very labor-intensive item to be building. There's an easy 40 hours of human labor that go into every single frame. If you start looking at USA labor costs, you just realize very quickly that's not feasible to produce in the United States, let alone at the massive quantity that a company like Ibis needs. Initially, the only frame that'll be made in the United States is a size small Ripley LS front triangle. You gotta start small, and if that proves successful, then clearly they have plans to scale this up. process of uh, deciding we wanted to make some stuff, we're like, okay, we're gonna try to improve every single thing we can. Ibis is gonna compete with the carbon manufacturers through three main innovations. The first, in order to keep labor costs down, one really time intensive piece of building these frames is simply cutting the carbon out, the raw materials. In Asia, the industry standard for doing this is to use large industrial scissors and to hand cut all the pieces of the frames. Ibis has purchased a mechanized plotter that uses a piece of computer software that lays out the pieces of the frames as efficiently as possible. And that means virtually no scrap material, only a tiny small amount. And the directionality is very important in carbon frames. And through this software, Ibis is able to ensure that the frames are gonna have exactly the ride characteristics that they want. Ibis' second key innovation is the aluminum molds that they've built. Now, the industry standard are these massive steel molds that are very, very, very heavy. By using aluminum instead of steel, the material heats up a lot faster. These are self-heating molds, so they actually have heating elements built into them. Carbon frames are heated up to a very high temperature in order to mold them together. The aluminum blocks need a lot less energy to get to that temperature, and therefore the environmental requirement is far lower. Now, the aluminum molds are also a heck of a lot lighter than those massive steel molds. This means that a single individual or two people can easily carry a mold across the room, whereas the steel molds require a significant amount of labor or even a crane to move. I envisioned that we would have these on a shelf and we're like, hey, we're gonna make some of these today. We pull it off the shelf. This tool, instead of having that big press that I was talking about, that's like the size of the, uh, a small sprinter van, we've got a self-heating tool. It was super cool to see all this stuff finished 
and it was really cool to tell the dealers about it. I'm really excited to get one of these frames here. My wife's gonna start riding a size small Ripley LS made in USA. I really hope that Ibis has success with this and is able to grow this operation. Now, if you like this video, definitely click that subscribe button below and tell me, do you care where your frame's made? Is it more important to you that you have the lowest possible price or is it more important that you have the highest possible performance? Let me know in the comments below.